In my last role, I oversaw FDA product recall. So reporting out monthly metrics like equipment management and recalls and compliance was something that was customary and frankly, something that I just did. But what I want to share with you today is a meeting and frankly a day that changed my life. February 24th, 2016. I go into our ICU conference room. I see Tom, our COO of our hospital, normally a very jovial, charismatic guy. I approach him, but the look on his face today says no. So, as most executive team meetings, I grab lunch, sit down, get ready for the meeting to start. Tom, with a very stern voice, says, everyone, we need to get the meeting going. Everyone takes notice and sits down. Once everyone's seated, he says, I want to play a call for you. He starts the call. Please, please, there, there's something wrong. There's something wrong. It's a woman on the phone, and she's panicking. There's, there's this loud beeping sound that's almost matching her. Please, my name is Linda. Please, my name is Linda. There's something wrong with my pacemaker. The beeping hits a fever pitch, and it frankly drowns out Linda's voice. And then it stops, and so does Linda's voice. Tom stops the call, looks around the room, and says, how did this happen? Frantically trying to search my brain for answers, how, how did this happen? All I could say was, Tom, our system failed. Our recall system failed. So in that meeting, we went through a course of different ways to try to attack this problem, to, you know, try to fix it. I wasn't satisfied with any of them. And the call stuck with me. It stuck with me. I almost became obsessed with it. So I started really thinking about how this happened. And I came up with a solution. And I pitched it to my boss. But a phrase that's so constant in healthcare, we don't have the resources, is what she told me. So in that moment, I realized, for me to really affect change and for me to stop a Linda story from ever happening again, I had to not only leave my health system, but leave healthcare, and I did. That number is the number of how many recalls happen yearly. What's so sad with Linda's story is that her recall was initiated in May 24th of 2014. Nearly two years had passed because our hospital was that backlogged. So I started thinking, how, how many people is this really affecting? How is, how is this impacting people? And just on the side is an average hospital. An average hospital. So there's nine serious injuries and ultimately one death that will result from something that's completely preventable. So I met Kwaku, and we teamed up to tackle this. We really, really drilled in on the problem. What was it? Believe it or not, what the FDA may call equipment is not what a hospital does, which is why labeling is always inaccurate. And then, because of that issue with labeling, they're not able to match equipment effectively to the FDA, which led to those gaps. It's a completely manual process that, unfortunately, with how fast and furious healthcare is, the gaps are even widened. And ultimately, it's fragmented. Because in healthcare, we don't want to admit to ourselves that we work in silos. But I'm happy to say that at Alarisoft, we've solved this from the very top to the very bottom. We first start with 
adequately giving a nomenclature convention with our algorithm. We have a matching algorithm that standardizes equipment inventory. And then we also attach a UDI to it, which is a unique device identifier, ensuring that a model is never missed again or mislabeled. We then take that and match it directly to the FDA so that in real time, a hospital is able to be alerted of defective equipment, shrinking that gap. And then we collaborate. No more silos. Hospitals can do all of their reporting of an adverse event directly on our platform, all together. So right now, we have some cool pilots going on because we've built it, and we're doing it right now. And we're working to help save lives right now. Pilots are great, but I want to implore all of you to help us spread and understand why this is important and make sure that, you know, when you go into a hospital, you feel safe and you feel secure with the devices that are being used on you. That's Alaris off, but I'd be remiss without saying that I have a phenomenal team that's really kept me going. And ultimately, I want to really thank Hillman as well as this ecosystem for welcoming us, for believing in us, and seeing this as, um, as a problem that can be tackled and ultimately solved. Thank you so much.